You, you have a question. Yes. when you were going to walk down the hallway and it says take a left, take a right, open the door, and that door is going to be an airlock. You know, you just never knew, right? So, uh, <clears throat> the, um, the, obviously the, the, we call it the call from the office, right? Where you get the call from the, the uh, top guy and you always go, these guys don't normally call us, right? So, uh, why is Ron Moore calling me? And of course, you always surmise that something's going to happen and a year before, I would say several months before, uh, he called me up and he says, well, um, the time has come, Mr. Thomas Eric, you know, and basically told me there was going to be a three-story arc uh, in which my character is going to leave. <coughs> I didn't know at the time that the series was basically going to be over as well. So it's, it's always hard to leave any show. But it was very much harder for me to leave Battlestar because I had been so involved with it for 35 years. And first of all, in the original, and then working very hard to inspire revival and traveling around the country and putting a lot of my heart, time, energy, and money um, into a story that I loved and felt had such infinite potential, you know, to explore dramatic themes and sociological themes, political themes, and. Even to this day, I feel like they've barely begun to scratch the surface of the potential of Battlestar. But for whatever reasons, the networks are always in a hurry to get off any space show. Or, you know, fortunately, Battlestar at least was on for four or five years. But for me, the original should have been on far longer, and the new show should have been on at least another year to two years. I felt they had to hurry the ending. You know, there was a lot of story left to be told, and they were having to throw out all these story hooks and endings and resolutions, you know, one after the other, um, and people were having to fly in and fly out doing multiple shows at the same time because, again, at the end of something, it's like a sinking ship. Everybody's going off to other shows, getting cast in this, and trying to coordinate schedules. It was really crazy that final year. Um, it was not my favorite year on Battlestar, you know? Um, but I, I love being on that show, and I love that cast, and I love the crew, very much like the original story, you bond under fire, you get to know everybody in a way that, you know, like going to war, you, you in the same foxhole, you're struggling, you never know what's going to happen next, you're terrified the show will fail, you know, you're, you, you, you get a nice paycheck, you go out and buy a car or a house and then you don't have the next paycheck in order to make the payments, you know, you have no idea how many actors have houses with no furniture, um, seriously, and uh, so it's, you know, the, the, the life of an artist can be up and down. And the first thing I told Janie Bamber, playing Apollo, I was just sharing with him, I said, look, the, the only insights I can share was not about Apollo, because I felt that he was great as Apollo. In fact, Jamie, for me, embodies Apollo, in the sense of the integrity and the honesty and the kind of character, metal he was came from. You know, the unfortunate part I always felt about Apollo is that I always felt Apollo was the... Uh, the unappreciated character, because like in life, the good guy doesn't seem to get all the attention, right? It's always the troublemakers and the bad boys and the things that get all the, the energy, and the good guy, you know, kind of gets neglected. Come on, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I mean, the truth, of, the truth was is that in terms of relationship, but not in terms of scenes and quality of scenes and material, and I saw that even with, with Jamie in the new show, he certainly got a lot for me, better material than I got. But even with the Apollo and the new character, I just felt that they didn't quite know what to do with Apollo. You know, where to place him and how to use him effectively. And I, you know, and so uh, again, my thought was, I said, I think for the good guy, you gotta take the good guy and put him in the most challenging circumstance imaginable, right? To force that good guy to deal with his stuff, to bring out his stuff. 
And probably you could say that about any character, but you really have to do that with the good guy. You gotta break him up, shake him up, throw him off the cliff, and then it's that struggle to deal with all the challenges that brings out that character, right? The specialness of that character. So they started to explore with the Apollo character doing that. Uh, for me, getting to play the Tom Zara character, I was so relieved because it was so nice to play a really conflicted, you know, politically wounded idealist like Tom Zarek. And uh, as I've said to so many people, um, it's funny how people tend to buy into things. Um, black and white, we tend to want to put things in safe compartments, right? Good guy, bad guy. Uh, Battlestar was never about good guy, bad guy. It was about the fact that good people are capable of doing horrible things for good reasons under the right circumstances. The question is then, how do you live with that? How do you deal with that? <clears throat> and I thought, here's Tom Zarek, uh, obviously is aspected like this nefarious character that you don't know what his motivations are, but I always tell people, well, you know, I think I had two suits, you know, to his name. He didn't have much money. Um, he obviously spent 25 years in prison fighting for human rights to make governments accountable and to stand up for freedom. And of course, he got judged for being a terrorist. And I thought, wow, how interesting. You know, like the Jesus, you know, judge not, let she be judged, or he who threw the first stone, he cast the first stone. You've heard that little saying. And I thought the next second we're down on Caprica, and guess what? We're all terrorists going against the silence, right? So, Tom Zarek was in a, you have to understand, he was like in a dictatorship where friends, people, brothers, sisters were thrown into jail, were killed, political rights were taken away, and the only recourse was terrorism. So, he was willing to stand up, and I honestly you know, looked through history. Anybody that stood up against governments, even though they're standing up for the vast majority of us, so often we're not comfortable with the person who stands up and is adversarial to the government, right? We get uncomfortable with that person. And I thought, here's a guy that spent 25 years. Why? Was he, did, was he power hungry? Did he want to be a king? No. He was trying to get equality. <clears throat> and here he is in another post-9-11 type scenario where governments, and by the way, in post-9-11 scenarios, governments have, no matter how well-intentioned, drift either left or right and become more dictatorial. And here we have good people moving into a political circumstance where they start to think, we know what's right for everybody, and if you don't agree with us, you go to jail. Where did democracy go? My thought was, democracy is a fragile institution that can be lost very easily if people don't make their governments accountable, right? We know that about today. So my thought was, here's Tom Zarek standing up against you know, look, I love Adama, I love Rosman, I love those actors, but they were doing a lot of bad things in the name of doing something good. But they were doing a lot of things that had they done them here in America, they would be the ones going out the airlock. So again, I looked at Tom Zarek as a wounded idealist who had every reason to distrust government. And he was cut off at every quarter from having any viable way to have a positive influence. You know, they kept pushing him to the side, relegating him into very places where they could keep an eye on him, where he had no power or authority. When they took away the presidency illegally and made him vice president, again, he was put to a place where he couldn't have any positive influence. I thought, over and over, he's put into all these situations, and then you have Gaeta, who sits there and gets upset, because why? Because essentially, they wanted, you know, if you want to translate it to today's terminology, Muslim terrorists, not Muslims, but Muslim terrorists, to have access to your technology. Well, I don't know about you, but would you not have a worry about letting a Cylon, who doesn't even know their own program, into your technology? Would you not have any kind of feeling that maybe that may not be the right decision? So it seemed to me that Gaeta and Zarek were equally as right as Rosalind and Adama, but in this case, there was no political recourse. You couldn't go to the Senate and the Congress and get a, you know, take a vote. It was, if you don't do what we want you to do, you go to jail. So we were for forced to an extreme position, which is a coup. And I'm the one, if you remember, that sits there and tells Gaeta, I go, Gaeta, 
he comes to me, I didn't go to him, and he goes, you want to do this because you believe that if we let the Cylons in, we're going to take over this ship, we're going to be enslaved, we're going to lose everything. And I said, if you do this, people are going to die. Because in coups, you either win or lose, and if you believe in winning because you want to save more people, which is the only reason for a coup, then you have to be willing to take out the people that are against you, you know? And I think Zarek had been through life and death. He had lost everybody he ever loved. He spent 25 years in prison. He would gotten to a place, I think, where he was able to make what I call a tough love call and do what was not because he loved doing it, but because that was what was you had to do politically if you were going to win. So again, people got so upset, and I did too, when I saw that scene to kill the, the, the very people that supported Tom Zarek, the only people that supported him he has to take out. But the way it was filmed, you couldn't really see what a tough decision that was for him. So all I can tell you is that for Richard Hatch, doing that scene was the toughest scene I ever did in my life. Seriously, the toughest scene. I had a tough time finding a, a viable way to commit to that choice to do that. Even though, and I, and I have to tell you why. I think tough love decisions are hard for all of us. You know, I really do. And most of us, if tough love decisions were made by our government, which is probably what they should be doing, most of us would want to hang them and, and send them out the airlock. You know? As much as a tough love decision might be the way to go, it's the one that causes the most pain, right? So, I think uh, me coming to terms with a tough love decision was the hardest thing I ever did in my life. And you know, we connect to our characters in a very emotional way. So what happens to our characters affect us as, as human beings. And I think a lot of the actors would speak to that. So again, it was a very, very difficult thing for me to do that scene. And then also because I have such a love for Battlestar, you have to understand all tied in that when we all of a sudden have a Dama come running down and the troops are coming down, you know, I mean, honestly, that was a very powerful scene. And I swear to God, even though it's acting, it was terrifying. That moment of, you know, that look, only, only Edward Almas can look at you with that, those eyes and put the fear of God into you, right? And, and I have to tell you, my first day on the Battlestar set, when we're having lunch and all he knows is I'm the guy who wrote all those scathing articles about the networks and studios not embracing sci-fi and not listening to the fans and blah, blah, blah. And when I sat down, he was eating his lunch and, and we're doing a read-through and, you know, he's just staring at me with that, you know, Adama stare. And, and that never happened again because we became good friends and he was a wonderful man and very supportive. But I got that same look again when he's sitting there, they're going to blow me out the launch tube, you know. So, again, it was kind of a triple whammy for me leaving the show. You know, a show that I loved. That was a very emotional moment. Um, and number two, that scenario, that political scenario, because I'm very political. I don't care what people believe in. I just want people not to buy into sound bites. I just want people not to buy into a belief because everybody told them that this is the way. Find your own truth. Whether it's left or right or in between doesn't matter. Although my belief is the vast majority of us, I think, believe in the same things. We're more in the middle. Sometimes the extreme lefts and rights control the agenda, but most of us are in the middle somewhere. I think we agree on far more than we disagree on. You know, but we always concentrate on what we disagree on, which is why everything's polarized. Nothing gets done. But all that was in Battlestar. And so it affected me on a deep level what happened to Zarek. You know, I thought, here, here's the guy standing up, challenging government, wanting to protect democracy and, and equal rights, and he's the guy that's the bad guy. And I thought, here was um, uh, Baltar having been responsible for millions of people dying and being pardoned, right? And here's Zarek and Gaeta, who are standing up for something they believe in, and not because they're trying to usurp the authority of Adama, but because they forced him to challenge him because he took away democracy and gave them no political recourse. And so it affected me on multiple levels, is all I can tell you. So it was a very, 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 very difficult series of scenes for me to play. And uh, the Battlestar cast came up. I got some really nice hugs. Uh, James Callis came up. Because everybody knows how painful that is doing your death scene and leaving the show. I mean, everybody goes, oh, every actor loves to play a death scene. 
leaving Battlestar was not just leaving a show you love. This was the most actor-friendly, collaborative, creative set I have ever been on in my life. And just Edward almost told this whole thing. You're going to run off to all these other shows and you can't wait to star in movies and whatever else you're going to do. So rarely do you appreciate what you have when you have it. And then when it's gone, you're going to look back and realize how rare and how special this experience was. And so, because I had been on the original Battlestar, I already knew what that feeling was. So leaving that show was twice as painful for me because I realized that, you know, we never have this, this kind of experience again. So it, it was a very, very emotional time for me, uh, and I was very happy. Like I said, I felt very blessed to be part of two great shows. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I'm still involved in the Battlestar universe. Um, I, you know, I'm writing comic books, and I have these series of novels that I've helped to put together and co-write mm -hmm. the stories I've written myself. Um, and I want to see more Battlestar, and obviously they're developing a new script for a movie. I think Battlestar belongs in the movies. Uh, Brian Singer and, and Tom DeSanto and a bunch of other people talked to Glenn Larson who uh, they're all fighting to kind of keep it with the original integrity of the original show but of course everybody wants to change it and make it different and new so it's always those creative forces trying to find the best way to, to do a new Battlestar Galactica movie based on the original premise but obviously covering new ground but I, for one, can't wait to see a Battlestar movie, regardless of whether I'm in it or not, because I just think I saw the original movie with all of us in it uh, on the IMAX at the 25th anniversary convention, which I co-produced. Even with the bad matte paintings, okay, of the original, we had a pristine print. It looked absolutely amazing on the IMAX. So a new Battlestar movie would just be mind-blowing. I can't wait. Did I answer your question? Okay, I'm sorry to talk so much. I'm sorry. Ask Anne a question, please. We don't have time. We're done. I'm sorry. They're all waving at us that we have to get out of here. I, I'm sorry we couldn't get to all of your questions, but thank you all for coming. Thank you, guys. If you have any other questions, we'll be over there in the, in the room. And you don't have to buy anything, you can just come up, say hello, ask a question, okay? All right.